When God is the author, nothing happens in the past and remains there. It defines history. It shapes the present and occupies the future all at once. Everything you're about to learn now has the power to guide you into his light. Well, the apostle Peter followed this, we know. Would I have followed him? Would you? Because he asks all of us, even now, the choice lies before us. The Son of God, he would know every mystery of the universe, every connection of life itself between heaven and earth. How would he pull back the curtain so we could understand at least some of it? He chose to tell stories, stories called parables that only he could tell, stories that ran parallel to everyday occurrences. And when we really understand these parables, a light goes on inside ourselves. So listen. Search for your light. The lone road. The vulnerable nature of life. The risks we all encounter. Jesus is telling us who our neighbor is. How to love them. The setting? A certain man on his way to Jericho. He fell among thieves. They wounded him near dead. Jesus said some passed by as this certain man lay there. Their station in life would have us believe they would help. They didn't. Desperation had passed. Doom was setting in. until a man from Samaria approached, a hero of history, whose name we use to this day, the Good Samaritan. The Samaritan's sense of compassion ran so deep, he arranged for his lodging and recovery, returning to pay any additional debt. This is the level Jesus said we can go to, loving our neighbor. What does the Good Samaritan teach us? That there's no place on God's earth where one of his children doesn't count. When someone is suffering or in great need, we don't have to figure out who matters most. Jesus gave us the answer. We all matter most, every last one of us.
The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man, which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh the tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. Behold, the sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore I speak to them in parables. Because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Blessed are your eyes, for they see. And your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not. Then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word, 
and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth. And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, seeking goodly pearls, who when he hath found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. Have you understood all these things? Lord. This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? When he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which I had lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. 
and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And no man gave to him. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? I will go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came unto his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his eldest son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked him what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come. And thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. And would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. He, answering his father, said, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, Thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this, thy brother was dead and is alive and was lost and is found. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. 
For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye see. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good men of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first and the first last. Oh. And he be called the few chosen. The Lord speaks of life's challenges and opportunities as they come to us. And he doesn't shy away from the peril of inaction. We come to a crossroad and we're asked to choose. Even Jesus' path would indeed arrive at a crossroad where he would connect with his cousin, John the Baptist. He would give us an example to follow for the rest of time. And like any one of us who chooses a divine path, the enemy of light craves failure. The devil himself would tempt Christ to break his father's commandments, to give in, in essence, destroy his sinless sacrifice that would ultimately save the world. All this and so much more in episode three of our journey with Jesus.